All right, we're going to be palpating the muscle known as occipitalis and then directly after that frontalis. So I'm going to be starting here on the back of the head and I'm going to be looking for a bump that's sticking out on the back of the head, specifically on the occiput, and it is named as the external occipital protuberance. So this should be fairly easy to find in most people's heads. You can kind of just slide down the back of the occiput here and it's usually fairly central. On either side of that, there's going to be a slight raised ridge. This is known as the superior nuchal line of the occipital bone. So once you've identified both EOP and the superior nuchal line, what you're going to do is you're going to move up superiorly from that, and there will be a slight smaller ridge known as the supreme nuchal line, or otherwise known as the highest nuchal line. So this highest nuchal line, or supreme nuchal line, of the occipital bone is the origin for occipitalis. In some texts, it goes quite a bit wider and starts to pick up near the temporal bone, but for the most part, it's originating on the occiput. So the origin of occipitalis here on the occiput, the muscle is then traveling superior and then anterior, and it starts to insert into the skin or scalp of the forehead, which is known as the gallia aponeurotica, or otherwise known as the epicranial aponeurosis. So this muscle's function is to pull on that scalp or aponeurosis and draw it posteriorly. Therefore, by drawing the scalp posteriorly, it's actually connecting through frontalis to the eyebrow area, and it's going to raise the eyebrow. So what I'm going to ask for my partner here to do is as I'm palpating this area, I'm going to ask her to raise her eyebrows up for me and try to feel the contraction of this occipitalis. Now, just a note that some people are more dominant on the frontalis versus their occipitalis. So as they raise their eyebrow, you might not feel a whole lot of movement in this area. Okay, so we're gonna pause our video and we're gonna come back with a front view. Okay, so now that we have our person turned around, I'm following this aponeurosis forward, so the scalp. So on either side, it's kind of moving forward and then it's gonna be connecting into a muscle on the front of the forehead known as frontalis. So on the back, occipitalis, and on the front here, frontalis. So frontalis is going to be originating off that same epicranial aponeurosis that occipitalis inserted into, and it's going to be moving forward and then inserting into the skin and fascia over top of the frontal bone, right where the eyebrow is. So if this was too shorten, it would draw the eyebrow up as well as it would draw the scalp forward and create some wrinkles across the frontal bone. So I'm gonna ask my partner to do that for me. If you can please raise your eyebrows nice and tall. So some people are able to do this a little bit easier than others, but you will often see some ridges or wrinkles, as a lot of people like to say, across the front of their frontal bone here. That will be the contraction of this muscle. So its action is to elevate the eyebrows or draw the scalp anteriorly. So again, like I said, depending on if you're more occipitalis or frontalis dominant, with this muscle's contraction, it'll either draw your scalp more forward or more posterior. I can see just from observing her head going through this motion that we have more movement coming from her occipitalis versus her frontalis at this point. And both of these muscles, occipital frontalis, are going to be innervated by the facial nerve. All right, we're going to be palpating the auricularis muscles, which are three muscles around the ear. So I'm going to be starting by palpating the anterior auricularis, or auricularis anterior, superior, and then finishing with posterior. So what we're going to be doing is palpating just in front of the ear. Oftentimes this is called the tragus. So if you palpate just anterior to the tragus, we're still on this epicranial aponeurosis that's covering down over top. So this origin is actually soft tissue in this fascial area here, and then the muscles going forward and inserting kind of into the spine of the ear. Now, a lot of people are unable to move this muscle, but if they could, it would draw the ear anteriorly using kind of that spine. So it's not kind of flapping the ear forward this way, but it's actually drawing the ear structure forward. So it's originating on gallia neurotica and inserting kind of into the anterior part of the ear right here. The second portion of this muscle is superior. Again, it's originating on that same gallia neurotica, just in a different location. So it's directly above the ear and it's going to go and insert just onto the top superior aspect of the ear. 
So if you were to grab your ear and pull it down and then just gently stroke kind of anterior post here, you might be able to feel some small kind of muscle fibers in that area. But if you're unable to move your ears, there's a really good chance you're not going to feel a whole lot of anything in this location. So origin, galliop neurotica, and our insertion, just the superior aspect of the ear, and it would draw the ear superiorly as it was doing its action. The third part of this muscle or third muscle in this group is auricularis posterior and it's going to be originating obviously behind the ear but it's actually more on a bony structure. So I'm just going to point out this location right here is known as her mastoid process but I'm going to be going superior and posterior to that and this is kind of the mastoid area. So I'm going to take her ear and I'm going to fold it forward and pull on it a little bit and you can see some of the remaining fibers what would be a posterior auricularis kind of right in here. So if people are able to move the ear, this is commonly the one they're able to activate and they can pull on it like so and it would just start to wiggle their ear. So depending, the person might be able to use their aponeurosis kind of attachment from the back or this posterior auricularis to kind of move their ear gently back and forth. So our origin right in this area here on that mastoid part of the temporal bone and then our insertion is into the posterior aspect of the ear. All three of these muscles are innervated by the same nerve, which is cranial nerve number seven, the facial nerve. 